Hi, this video is about preparing, inking up and then printing a dry point intaglio print without using any acid. It uses a metalised card that you scratch into or you stick things onto and then it's a colograph or you cut away to reveal the texture beneath because it's the textures and the indentations that will take the ink when you print. An intaglio print is a print in which the inks get stuck into the grooves and into the textures and into the holes in the plate rather than a lino print which is a print that relies on you inking up the surface and it's the holes and the cuts that don't print. So an intaglio print is printing using the holes, indentations and textures. I hope you enjoy. If you get something out of the video, please remember to like and subscribe so you will be notified when I upload any more videos. I hope to see you again. If you have any questions or queries, put them in the comments section below and I will endeavour to answer them. In this video, there are bits where I have simply speeded up the process so that you don't get bored and I will put this all on the time stamps below there'll be ch chapters within the video so you can skip bits and jump to the pieces that you're interested in um, and it'll also sort of give you a bit of a reference to go backwards and forwards through the video so this is my little um, intaglio dry point intaglio plate it is metalized card and you use dry point etching tools to cut into it this one is just a normal dry point etching tool that's a uh, sharpened steel and this one is a hand-held pin vise um, which has got a needle in it which I've sharpened. I sharpen them on my grinding stone and you twist your hand and twist it holding the point of the dry point tool down so you grind it to a sharp point because they do actually get worn quite quickly. This is my glue, I just have a little bit of glue out, good quality wood glue, to mend any little slips I make. If you mend them quickly with any mistakes you make it's much more efficient. So this is the sort of thing I'm going to look at. Um, I have tried to do this and filmed it but it didn't film so I've got to do another one. But it's simply cut into the plate with the tools and I'll demonstrate. What I'll do though is I'll put it on fast forward I need the space. It is quite heavy work, as in you have to press really quite hard. This is my customary, customary style with the bracken and ferns and brambles and I'm putting silver birches to the top. I'm going to do another one, this one, which is going to be more um, beeches and things, just different types of leaves but with the brackens and things at the bottom. Okay, I'm going to get going. You have to press pretty hard because otherwise it doesn't penetrate enough for the inks to be able to hold in the plate. And the idea is that you cut a piece, gouge it through the foil enough so that you can just lift it out and you sort of make up a whole lot of patterning on it. And what happens is the ink stays in the holes and stays in any texture so that any lines will hold the ink and any part of the card that's revealed underneath because that has got texture that will hold the ink too. It holds the ink in the grooves and the cuts of the
and go find a line. There are the two plates, I hope you can see them. They've been gouged out with the dry point etching tool. I have sealed them with acrylic varnish, clear acrylic varnish, and I'm going to start printing them in a minute. So I've got my two etching plates. I've got mount card that's been cut into little applicators because I use this to press the ink into the plate. I've got my pre-cut bits of newsprint 
because I use this to burnish the plate off with. And I've got my inks and a bit of linseed oil to soften the inks with. All right, here we go. I have to admit these are tried and tested. I do them for galleries. Um, these are silver birches. You get the ink onto your applicator and I press the ink into the grooves and you can see the grooves filling. The first pr press, the first print, needs a lot of ink because the plate is dry, has got no ink in it and you're feeding it for this first time. What I do is I put the lightest colour on first. Uh, what I want is it moving down to a lovely orange at the bottom and I'm going to start showing you how I lift this off. You pull it off, you lay this flat with your hand. This is the muse print. You lay it flat with your hand and you pull it off. If it gets dirty with the second colour, the darker colour, it'll corrupt the first one. So try to keep it clean, change the paper and of course if it's full of ink you're simply smearing it back onto the plate again and change your plate your paper often and eventually the ink starts to lift off the surface but remains in the holes in the grooves you can burnish this off with tissue papers i mean you can go on and on until it's the background is perfectly clean so once it's fairly well burnished up you can start thinking about putting in the darks where the tree trunks are going to be so you dabble them on where the tree trunks are and then start to burnish them off. Drag it through down the trunks but trying not to corrupt the neighbouring colours. Finish off by burnishing um, and cleaning making sure the ed edges are really clean. Make sure you don't touch it with your hands as this will leave finger marks and use the, so use the newsprint to touch the plate. Have a good look at the composition and add any little bits of darks just to take your eye up to the top of the picture and then that's about it. Burnish it off, make sure it's nice and clean. Adding that little bit extra and then that's that one done. Um, the next one is the Copper Beach one, which I really wanted to show you how you could really vary the colours um, and how really interesting colours blend together really nicely. But I will leave this one silent for you to have a look at. It's fairly obvious from having seen the Silver Birch ink up procedure as to how this one is going to work. I hope you enjoy. To print with you use etching paper, it's very rag heavy, cotton heavy paper and you soak it first so that when it goes through the press it gets pushed into all the indentations. In order to prepare this I get a sheet of paper and I run a ruler down a fold because that way you get a nice deckled edge.
Once prepared, the paper is soaked for 10 minutes in water, completely immersed in the water, and then placed on sheets of blotting paper. And this can be left for 24 hours, depending on how you like your paper to be, the sort of dryness and consistency you like your paper to be. I must admit, I don't use, leave it 24 hours. I will use it when I'm ready. Uh, it might still be a bit damp, but as I go through the day printing, it'll be dry by the time, it'll be good enough during the day. I've got an Eddie Picton press with gears, really, really lucky. I tighten it down as hard as it will go, and then I release it by about half a twist. And I might release it another half once I see how it goes, how it prints. On the bed of the press, you put newsprints on the base of it so that you can change it when it gets dirty. You put newsprint on top of that so that your blankets don't get too full of size. And then you've got two blankets, one which is really to absorb the size and is the softer blanket, the cheaper blanket. Um, and then the next one is to take the pressure and make sure everything's all nice and even and flat. Just noticed a rather lot of yellow smudging up there that I hadn't lifted off properly. And I don't like... Oops! <laughs> and I don't like the muck that's in there. Got a little wooden cotton bud and I'm just lifting out some of the dirt that's collected. I think it's in the old glue. I mean, once it's printed a couple of times, that won't, that glue will wear off. But even li that little residue of glue is enough texture to hold the ink. Right, my hands are filthy, so I am going to lift my paper. What I do is I fold some, one of these in half and lift the papers I need with these. But first of all, I'm going to place the plates onto the bed of the press. A nasty bit there. So the plates have been placed onto the bed of the press. Using my little edges, I carefully get the paper out of the blotting paper. I take it over to the press and place it on top of the plate. Then the newsprint goes over the top of it and then the two blankets and you smooth it out so that it's flat. Everything's ready. The press is under enough pressure. In fact I could take that down a bit more. It was a bit tight last time. I'm just releasing it another half a turn and then I'm just going to take it through and I s you can feel whether it's enough you can feel it as it hits the plate so I'm just going to take it through and bring it back this is gorgeously geared so this is dead easy um, and now the great reveal right lift up the blankets one two and the paper. There you go, you can see that's a bit skew if on the on the paper, but I don't mind. Other people would. And then just lift it out. That's one. And now for the other one. That's a better print. The second time you do it you can't see the colours where you have put the colours and where you haven't and I can see I've missed some of the colours on this left hand corner of the plate so I must not have got colour into that and I've also missed a bit at the top here so that would have been on that side I've either rubbed it out too much or I have not put enough in in the beginning so I'll just have to make sure that I put more in in the next time but what there are some really nice bits that's absolutely gorgeous can you see that that's really lovely and that's what I want, these, where the colours mix together so beautifully on the plate. Uh, and there's some nice bits in the reds and stuff. I just need to rub less, I think, and 
add more ink in the first place. I'm trying to do this while the studio is in use, so it's a bit mayhemish. But in any case, this is where... Oh, I know what I could do. Sorry. To dry them, I put them on a piece of board, on top of a piece of uh, newsprint. I cover it with newsprint and put the next lot on. And again, cover them with newsprint and place a board on top of this and then that way it dries them flat. You just have to check that they haven't got stuck to the inks like every other night or something. Well, every night really. Once you've let them dry overnight, you need to make sure they're not sticking together. So you need to lift off the paper. And in this case, I'm gonna replace the paper because I want them to dry. So if I leave them in the wet paper, they're going to take ages to dry. So I'll just replace them onto another board and put clean paper on them, making sure that yesterday's paper isn't stuck in any way to the inks on the plate. And then put the boards, the board back on top of it, the other board, when you finish layering them, and leave it to dry again for probably at least three days but they do dry nice and flat this way. Finish stacking them, just place the board on top again, and you can put a weight on that. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe, and if you have any questions or queries, pop them in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I see you again. Bye.